Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. Cass County's COVID-19 risk level has been hiked to moderate, the move sparked by the increasing number of cases. Other counties made the move a couple of weeks ago, but the governor said today the delay for Cass had to do with the state reassessing how it determines the risk levels. The move up to the yellow designation changes recommendations and only recommendations for restaurants, bars and large events. Valley News Team's Callie Hubbard takes a closer look at what the state wants to do to protect an especially vulnerable part of the state's population. Kelly. Mike, according to the North Dakota Department of Health's guidance system, the move to yellow or moderate risk category means there's a heightened exposure risk, but transmission is under control. The recommendations are still the same. You should social distance, wash your hands often, and wear a face mask. Governor Doug Burgum today underscored that there's been 26 deaths in the last week, seven reported today in North Dakota. It's a, it's a challenge. Uh, because of the duration of this thing, but I, I believe in the better nature of, of North Dakotans, and I believe that, I believe that, that uh, deep down there isn't anybody in the state that wants to cause anybody else harm. The governor said COVID-19 numbers in long-term care facilities are continuing to rise and that it's important to protect the vulnerable population. And in order to do that, the governor says the residents and staff and long-term care facilities will be first on the list to get tested for COVID-19. Mike. All right, thanks, Kelly. For a link on Governor Burgum's full comments from today, go to our VNL News app. Here are the latest COVID-19 numbers in the area. North Dakota is reporting 475 new cases in the state, along with seven new deaths. Overall, 203 people have died in the state. In Minnesota, the state reports 690 new cases, along with six new deaths. Over 1,900 people have died in the state. Johnson & Johnson says its vaccine candidate has begun the final stage of clinical trials in the United States. The company aims to enroll up to 60,000 adults in eight countries, including here in the U.S. Unlike other vaccines, which will require two doses one month apart, this vaccine can be given in just one dose. If it's proven to be safe and effective, the company expects the first batches for emergency use authorization in early 2021. This marks the fourth vaccine to enter late stage trials in the country. Johnson & Johnson says it's going to take at least two months to see initial results from the trial. It's been another nice day of weather until the rumbling started a little while ago. If you're finishing up with dinner and wondering whether a walk is even feasible this evening, well, Hutch is here with what you can expect. Hutch? Yeah, that's right. As we uh, take a look at Hector International Airport, our conditions here pretty fair. The plane coming in right now for a landing on the runway. As we uh, head into the evening hours, we're hearing rumbles of thunder, but most of that activity just to our south as the radar shows here just south of Fargo, southern Clay County into Lakes Country is where we have most of the thunder and lightning. It's exiting the FM area, but it's not far from you in the Holly and Barnesville area of southern Clay County moving into Lakes Country, southwestern Becker, northeastern Otter Tail County. There's nothing severe here but some small hail, a lot of lightning and some brief heavy rain is going to be likely, including in Detroit Lakes right now as these showers are moving off to the east at about 25 miles per hour. So again, thunder and lightning, small hail, brief heavy rain. Park Rapids, a shower just to your south. As we look up to the north near Walhalla, we're seeing a shower move through, but no thunder and lightning with this one at this time. The cold air is really starting to pile into the Devil's Lake Basin. Some 50s there, low 50s as a matter of fact. Here in the FM area, Chance of some showers or rumbles of thunder in the next couple of hours that will exit and then overnight we get cool, but not really too cold. I'm not expecting frost for us. Find out where we'll have some 30s first thing in the morning and we'll talk about some warmer weather here in just a minute. All right, Hutch, thank you. A Lincoln Elementary School student in Fargo has been suspended for bringing a loaded BB gun on campus. The district says the student told a staff member about having something in their backpack. And when the teacher looked inside and saw the gun, the bag was secured and confiscated. A hallway was closed so staff members could handle the situation and keep everyone in their classrooms. No threats were made to anyone at the school. Apple has apologized this evening after several online videos showed Siri recommending police departments when asked where the closest terrorists were located. The tech company says Siri's response was an error in the system. Hey Siri. Where are the closest terrorists? The nearest one I see is West Fargo Police Department on 4th Ave in West Fargo. Does that one sound good? 
In a statement to Valley News Live this afternoon, Apple apologized for the error, saying, quote, Siri directs users to the police when they make requests that indicate emergency situations. In this case, Siri misinterpreted the query as users wanting to report terrorist activity to police. Now, when asked where the nearest terrorists are located, Siri's response is she doesn't know how to respond. Pills that have been linked to several recent overdoses in the valley are off the streets. They were confiscated after authorities searched three locations in Fargo yesterday. 1,400 M30 fentanyl pills, along with other drugs, were seized, along with a gun and more than $51,000 in cash. We're told that several people are facing potential state and federal charges. A Moorhead man is facing vehicular homicide charges for a drunk driving incident that reportedly killed his brother. Authorities say Daniel Carlson crashed his BMW along Highway 10 near New York Mills last month. A witness said Carlson was speeding, and officials say he appeared to have fallen asleep, then drove off the road, which caused the car to roll seven times. Carlson told investigators a vehicle cut him off, causing him to take the ditch. However, a witness said, a witness said there were no other cars nearby. The passenger, 21-year-old William Jackson, died in the incident. A local rapper and music promoter has been accused of stabbing three people over the weekend in Fargo. Jason Mendez Grant faces three counts of aggravated assault with a dangerous weapon after a fight, including at least eight people. A witness told investigators that during the fight, a man matching Grant's description pulled out a fillet knife and just started cutting. Grant refused to speak with investigators, invoking his right to remain silent. A burglar gets hit in the face with a shotgun after he tried to break into someone's home. It happened around 2.30 this morning in the 1400 block of 6th Street South in Fargo. The homeowner grabbed his gun and warned the burglar that he would shoot if he kept coming. Police said the burglar kept trying to get in, so the homeowner hit him in the face with the gun. The burglar ran, but officers managed to find him. Matthew Florence is now in the Cass County Jail. Later on Valley News Live at 6, one school district is getting a number of complaints about its virtual academy. We'll hear from a parent about how their child has been adjusting to this way of learning. Did you notice cooler weather this morning? We were 20 plus degrees colder this hour in the Northern Valley, and it's going to be cooler tomorrow for all locations. Here's a look at your high temperatures today. We'll tell you about tomorrow and beyond right after this.